Good morning. And I am, as I'm off known to say, deliciously proud to present to you another broadcast of Capturing Champions, presented by the Office of Economic Vitality for Tallahassee and Leon County. This broadcast is intended to equip minority and women-owned businesses with the knowledge, the strategies, encouragement, and confidence to start and grow their business in Tallahassee and Leon County. This is a casual conversation meant to give listeners a glimpse into the Tallahassee and Leon County business community and the resources that are available to minority and women-owned businesses. Our topics can range from access to capital or expansion tips to motivational stories from local business professionals. But know this, each episode will address areas of concern and the opportunity for new and established businesses. With that thought in mind, who better to be a part of our our third broadcast than the president and CEO of the Capital City Chamber of Commerce, Miss Katrina Tuckerson. Welcome, Katrina. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I am delighted. As I say what I say, I'm deliciously <laughs> proud to have you on this morning because of what I know has been the important role that you play in what we call our business ecosystem. Through our partnerships with the Capital City Chamber of Commerce and with the uh, Office of Economic Vitality, I can say, having had a first a front row seat to what I know has been your activity and impact, you have been making a difference. So before we get into what I know has been your impact, tell us a little bit about Katrina and your journey to being the the, the woman in charge. Daryl, I think that's going to be the hardest question of the day, talking about myself. Um, well, anyway, um, again, I'm Katrina Tuggerson. Um, this is my, I do what I do every day because it's my passion. Um, of course, I have two wonderful children. My mom. Yes, you do. <laughs> my mom. Um, I, a little bit about myself. I came from the aeronautical world. Um, I was with Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University for 16 years. I was the director of the campus, so I know a little about, about the education arena in aviation um, all, and then what I did was as I shift careers so th- I'm working with the Capital City Chamber is my second career in which I wanted to do something that I would enjoy and I know that I can put my hands to and see how it work and change lives and businesses now you know I never knew that really I never knew that really you uh, I when you and I met you were at the uh, uh, greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce with a uh, uh, back when, uh, before OEV, they had they had the uh, the EDC, the EDC, and that's where I first met you. I did not know that you came from an aeronautical background. So what happened, um, Mr. Ben Pingree, right. um, we was always friends, and I was invited, because I always worked with Embry-Riddle, um, I was invited to one of the meetings at the airport, the airport advisory meeting, um, as a representative for Embry-Riddle. So he kept staring at me, and he kept staring at me, but I, what I went into the uh, that that particular day, I went in to say that Embry Riddle will be um, closing here in the community, but all of the uh, I couldn't I wasn't Embry Riddle's PR person, so I couldn't make it publicly with the newspapers and everything. So, uh, Mr. Pingry walked up to me afterwards. He said, "Katrina, I got something I think that will fit will suit you because I know you," um, and that's when he introduced me to the chamber world. Um, I went, I said, you want me to do what? And I said, um, he said, I want you to be the director of diversity at Greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce. I said, is it because I'm black? I just said it. <laughs> um, you, Everybody in the community knows I really speak my mind, but I speak yes, it. <laughs> um, so, and, and then he said, no, he said uh, he saw qualities in me that I didn't see in myself. And I said, you know what? I see the same qualities that I see in businesses and people. So um, before, and that was before um, OEV, before your position came available and you you came in your place. And what we did was um, the EDC, I got in position and the EDC folded within four months of that. um, And the Office of Economic Vitality was created. And so what I realized is that 
Um, I'm still a minority. We're still in need of help. Um, and then I also started recognizing when I would go to meetings, I would see that the Capital City Chamber seat was there. Um, but the leadership had shifted and we re- reconvened, um, me and Commissioner Diane Williams Cox reconvened and say, how can we help? And so this is why Capital City Chamber, I'm sitting in this seat today. You're very, very right. I re- I, re- I remember those days. Let me tell you something. Now, what, you know, sometimes in our modesty, we fail to see ourselves as others see us. And I think, you know, you, you, you kind of throw off on the fact that you're frank. But here in a world where people are duplicitous, mm-hmm. uh, insincere, right. uh, d- d- devoid of integrity, the fact that you are candid. And candor is not a bad thing. <laughs> candor is truth. And I think sometimes we become so politically correct that we become feckless. So, and which, and, and let me tell you what I also know as a person who works in collaboration with you, I know that your candor is well served by this, the community is well served by your candor because you hold everyone accountable. You hold, and, and you, ex, and your expectations on behalf of your constituency are realized because of your candor. So you keep on talking and speaking up. (laughs) Yeah, I am a big person of integrity. So um, without integrity, um, businesses need integrity and people feel it. Right. And so people feel truth. Um, they feel the connection and relationship that comes with it. So um, it's no need of doing anything and just bluffing and um, posting on social media. Everybody knows when you post on social media, um, you showing your best. You're not showing the truth behind it. Right. So when people come, businesses and people come to me individually and we sit down and take a deep dive. Well, what I think is also important, Katrina, uh, and I say this all the time. You got folks who like to chase likes and folks who want to change lives. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you have changed lives by one, by your advocacy, you help businesses to thrive, not just Mm -hmm. survive, but thrive. You You are a connector on their behalf. You are their champion. And then because of that, you're able to create more jobs for your people. Right. That's why you're on here, because we see you. Katrina Tuckerson as a champion. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a lot taking it in, and you sitting here talking about me in my face. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm a just, you know, I'm just be honest. I don't, you don't wake up on a Monday morning and people just tooting your own your horn. So, um, this means a lot to me as well. Well, I want you to. I mean, now we're going to talk about businesses, but I want to talk about you just a little bit more. Part of the reason you are the woman that you are is because of your mom. Oh yeah. Apostle Tuckerson, right? Apostle Lily Tuckerson. Uh, for those of our listeners who do not know, her mother is a major spiritual leader in uh, the state of Florida uh, and is, has churches that she uh, that report to her. But she and her son, on her own has a compelling and an impactful ministry down in central Florida. Uh, and if you've ever met Apostle Tuckerson, Katrina, <laughs> the, the chip did not fly far from the block, as my grandma used to say. Apples don't fly; they fall. And you'll and 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 so talk to us about the example that you have, and also your mother's example in entrepreneurship as well. Oh, absolutely. So, um, to, and I'm glad that's my favorite topic is to talk about my parents. Um, and I will mention my dad, Bernard Tuggerson. He's deceased. He's been gone for nine years. I think about him every day. Um, but just to say, my dad was the first black in Chevron um, when I was in elementary school in Marion County area. And um, so I grew up on on what they call black dollars and entrepreneurs, but I didn't even know it. You don't put that things together. They just made sure that me and my brother had a complete life and they made us be humble with it, right? Um, so from that, he, my dad came into ministerial role and my mom was right there beside him. Um, they they worked their business together, the Chevron station together. And back in the day, my dad would do the outside work. My mom would do all the paperwork in the inside. From there, they branched into ministry and from my dad purchased 18 acres of prime property on 441 
um, when you go into the Ocala area between Gainesville, right by the Holly Davidson shop and across from there, we secured another 11 acres that we have a school. So I am an owner of a school, an elementary school from K through third grade. So entrepreneurship runs through our, our blood. Yeah, social entrepreneurship <laughs> at that. In social entrepreneurship. So when I go to meetings, I actually oft, often ask people, you know, if you driven a church van or took one person out of a community and change into and that's economic development right um so i saw this all my life and i saw um putting um your hands on it with a um and changing life not to gloat about what we have one time we had 14 people in our house that my dad just wanted to change their lives and make a difference and we was my, my mom had cooked this big pot of beefaroni which i don't eat to this day uh-huh. and i was like well we gotta eat this i thought we had the money and he she they was like we eat you eat with everybody eat and you are not I got in so much trouble you'd have thought I was on drugs that day <laughs> um, but they just kept us grounded and humble um, one of the other events that my parents did um, in the middle of Ocala on 4th Street 5th Street my dad purchased all of the um it's, it's called the west side of so we own a lot of the west side of, to clean it up um, and I remember him going out there with the mayor taking down the houses cleaning them up and now they have I have um, subsidized housing on those properties fantastic fantastic your mother uh, your church and your mother also has a a number of uh, uh, other business ventures that y'all manage on, and, 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 and that are combined with ministry Absolutely. So um, I one of the things that my mom taught me um, and she teaches when she teaches leadership classes, if your ministry or your business, what you're doing wholeheartedly don't affect your area, you're not doing it right. Right. You're not doing it right. So with that being said, I've always taken that with me. Um, A lot of the programming um, that I do here in the community, we've done there in Ocala, um, and it's been effective. Every community is different, so it it stems um, into and spills into the community differently. But I have, I didn't know I'll go back to what I learned. Right. But I enjoyed it. I enjoy it every day. Well, when you're when you're when you're driven by your faith, no matter what job you do, what profession you do, you see it as ministry. Right. 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 And right. That what we do for the least of these. We do also unto uh, to our creator. So I, I shout out to Apostle Lily <laughs> Tuckerson this morning. Uh, I know she will be hearing this in the future. Uh, we just want to thank her for sharing her daughter with a grateful Tallahassee Leon County community. So now let's talk about the Capital City Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Y'all are critical to this community and the local economy. Let's talk about uh, talk about the Capital City Chamber and your leadership and your uh, and your vision for your organization. Well, um, the Capital City Chamber of Commerce, um, I have enjoyed sitting in the seat every year. I quit every day. Um, because any time that you're putting your hands on human services or business, um, you're not going to become a millionaire. Um, it's you sit there strategically. So um, I quit every day, but I get up and start every day, just like fresh every day. Okay. Um, the way that we're going, I think, is a positive way. It took time to find balance and structure, and we've enjoyed doing it. Um, we enjoy working with our um, partners in the community, and that's what makes us strong. Well, let me tell you what I what – I, let me let our listeners know. Yeah, let me know. hear your p- perspective. Okay, let me <laughs> let my listeners know. When we found ourselves in the throes of a pandemic – Mm-hmm. And many, you know, it's interesting how short our memories can be as a community. You remember when we finished in March of, what was that, 2020? Mm -hmm. When the kids came back from spring break and we thought that we were going to go back to schools and the entire nation shut down. Right. Everyone was isolated. Businesses were not open. We're not operating. People were not at work. Uh, and then our, at the, at the direction of the IA board, we realized that we needed to take some of our sales tax dollars right. and use them to be a part of the economic recovery. Uh, the cha- the IA board was informed by conversations 
that they were having with chamber leadership from the Tallahassee Chamber, Big Bend Minority Chamber, and right there with them all was the Capital City Chamber of Commerce requiring, demanding that our community be responsive to the needs of businesses. I know what has been your impact in conversations. I also know that when we put those monies out on the street, at the same time, you also, the Capital City Chamber, provided technical assistance right. for businesses to uh, to be able to uh, capture those recovery dollars. So, again, this goes back to what I said. There's a difference between chasing likes and changing lives. So let's talk about what has been, you know. So I, I just had to tee that up for you because you weren't going to mention it if no, I had I, mentioned I, and, it. And it's not that I'm hiding anything. I but just, I just want you, let's talk about the impact that you know that the Capital City Chamber had during the pandemic. During the pandemic, um, the 2020, when we all bridged together and collaboratively got um, a game plan on how to strategically help the community, um, the technical assistance, I kept hearing um, and our team kept hearing it uh, um, that I pulled together really quickly, kept hearing the same message that um, we, we don't have it together or a lot of the small businesses that we serve they were not together and they were scared right. um, and what does that look like besides us holding their hand and saying you can do this um, and the technical assistant and it's still available so if you still go to our website right now that technical assistant option is still there and it's there because of OEV OEV said we need to continue this um, and you reached out to me and you said how, we, how can we make this continue to go um, from there, I have seen so many great results. It's so many stories, um, I, and I, we at Capital City Chamber say we're gonna do a better job telling them, um, similar to what you're doing now. But so many businesses, we we lost a lot of businesses, but we still were able to save the businesses and keep them afloat. And a lot of the the technical assistance programs, um, I had different communities to reach out to us and say, how did y'all do that? Um, and so we were able to share. So. Um, through also through that the businesses it may uh, it was a time where everybody woke up and said let's get this right so I think uh, again um, thank you OEV um, and thank you just for partnering with us that the dollars that was put out into the communities and the the minority commissioners that we have all the commissioners that voted on that is it was right on time it was right on time and and then you know uh, when we were dealing with the federal monies with PIP, mm-hmm. y'all provided technical assistance right. with that. There were recovery dollars at the state level. Right. Y'all provided technical assistance on that. And let me tell you something, it, and this is something our listeners will appreciate, particularly our business owners. People do business with people that they respect. And they feel comfortable with. And they feel comfortable with. One of the things we also learned out of that PIP process is that a lot of businesses were not capturing their documents and their data. Right, 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 right. Which was necessary for us to successfully be able to help them to navigate the application process. Uh, there was there are some takeaways that we took from that. Right. About how we can best uh, uh, help help to facilitate these types of programs on behalf of our clients. So if you're listening... Make certain that you capture your documents. Keep track of your annual your annual filings, your annual tax information, your annual uh, recertifications uh, with the Office of Economic Vitality, with the <laughs> Office of Supplier Diversity. Ms. Tuggerson also wants to tell you to make certain that you make sure your filings are current with uh, sunbiz.org, right? Right. Because you never know when you might need those documents and you need those documents set aside. That was one of your biggest challenges. That was one of our big and, and leading into that, there which is bringing me to the excitement what we got going on in 2020 I done skipped all over but we had we gonna get there but this this right on point um so because the documents um I um work with um two CPAs now and you were able to take away with QuickBooks um where you can just go and plug a couple of things in there yourself and also we set up where you can come back to them and they will help you file get your filings right with that being said on the 20 
25th, I'm not looking at my calendar exactly right now, but on the 25th of this month, we'll start having those conversations again, what your tax documents look like, and the filings, and also have own hybrid um, workshops starting up. All of that is already on our calendar on our website right now, so you'll see all of the websites that are um, unfolding. So I, 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 let me say this. You got a captive listening audience right now. Mm -hmm. Tell our listeners why they should join the Capital City Chamber of Commerce. Well, you have to join in the Capital City Chamber. Um, you will be welcome to a family. Um, we care about each individual business. Um, as you come on board, um, we sit down as a team, see where you are, and try to make sure um, that we meet you where your business is. The Capital City Chamber, everybody connect to different pockets of people, but we are that family-oriented, and we bring solutions. So <laughs> that's why you want to um, um, join the Capital City Chamber of Commerce. Now, let me. All right, I done gave you <laughs> your sugar. Now I'm going to give you some salt. <laughs> okay. So you, y'all y'all are working collaboratively. You, one, one of the things I think is important, and you as church folk, because you and I are church folk, mm -hmm. we know sometimes churches or uh, discriminate amongst themselves, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's great that you and the Big Bend Minority Chamber and the Greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce work collaboratively. So let's talk about how y'all came up with the idea to do an updated disparity study after I had completed my disparity study. <laughs> well, and, and I can answer that. Um, the reason why that was, um, it was one, um, 2020, the pandemic made us look at it with the, a different eye. Yes. When we looked at that with a different eye, we was like, well, we need to adjust this, these a couple of points and these clauses in here. Um, and we know everything that's on black and white can be amended. So um, we said, Mr. Daryl Jones. <laughs> emailing all out to the community say let's get this right um and then we were in a time where the world the community was listening with a different ear so how do you capture that moment and make it right and change the policies to create that um, diversity and inclusion that everybody speaks so greatly of um, and that's what it looks like when it's changed on paperwork on documents where you might not see a big party about it but you'll see it down the road in years to come let me let me help our audience to understand what I'm talking about. And I, uh, <laughs> as old folks would say, hindsight is always twenty twenty. <laughs> we had just completed a disparity study back in two thousand nineteen. Uh, the both of the chambers, the Capital City Chamber and the Big Bend Minority Chamber, following the acceptance of our disparity study and our brand new policies, came back to us with what they believed were important recommendations. Uh, those recommendations were one that we needed to capture PCAR data. We needed to uh, we needed to do a greater comparison right. of our program to other programs found across the country. We also wanted to find out that we need to set aside goals specifically that were just for black-owned businesses right. and not for minority-owned businesses. The good part, and this is why hindsight is always twenty twenty. What they have done. And they brought this argument to the IA board of directors who agreed with them. Subsequently, we are now in the throes of updating that disparity study. And now that disparity study is going to be even leaner. It's going to give us an opportunity to review what had already been the brand new policies and their efficacy. In essence, what they did was they challenged our office to be even more better to be even better and then to also be more responsive and to be even more contemporary and relevant because we're now capturing data that's most recent, particularly following the impacts of what we know the pandemic had on our economy. So let's, if we had a, a <laughs> round of applause, we'd give it right now. Yay! <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people, Daryl, when you say disparity study, like a lot of our listeners, they may not even know what that is. Right. So a disparity study, just to um, educate everybody again, um, that is a 
component that is a document that is needed and put into communities in order to put dollars from the city and the county when our local officials come together to um, nominate, um, I mean, vote on different issues and um, problems that um, within the community. And that allows you to put dollars behind it and strengthen what we're doing. And so that's why every community needs a disparity study. And it also, um, we already know it's a despair in the minority community, but it needs to be documented. And that goes all the way until now, even with your businesses and what you're doing now, everything requires data and documents in order to put money behind it. Just like going into a financial institution, right. they require documentation. And that disparity study provides the legal in- underpinning for which makes our aspirational targets and our program legally defensible. Right. And so, I mean, so know this, uh, the Office of Economic Vitality respects the Capital City Chamber of Commerce and the Big Bend Minority Chamber of Commerce and the Greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce because they are our partners and we serve the we have a shared constituency of minority and women-owned businesses. So next, let's talk about let's continue to talk about the impact of the Capital City Chamber of Commerce. For the last three years, is it? You have had a uh, uh, a conference that brings us all together. Let's right. talk about that. Um, it's the, the Advantage Conference. The Advantage Conference, and we named it the Advantage Conference. You started Conference. that, right? Yes, yes, yes. What well, we- you started that, right, Katrina? Yes, I did. The Advantage Conference. <laughs> yes. Capital City Chamber of Commerce. I'm, I'm, I'm getting better confessing you, you, that you I did things that. there. You I'm start, getting better. You started that. <laughs> I'm getting better. <laughs> um, the reason why we were listening to the community, I like to listen to the community, and the reason why we done that is because uh, we kept saying that the minority businesses um, was left out on important information and information even that you guys are doing um, over there at OEV. And it gives in a a one place, like a one stop resource center for everyone to come and find out what's happening in the community within our own local community here. So the advantage, the reason why we named it advantage, because everybody always asks, what's the advantage of joining Capital City Chamber of Commerce? So that is why we named it the Advantage Conference. Well, I'm grateful for it. It gives us an opportunity as your partner to get our message out to our shared constituents in. And every year it gets better and better. So thank you. It is a gift to our community. Well, let's talk about one of the things. Well, if you had to choose what you think might, what you would believe has been your most impactful contribution to our community, through the Capital City Chamber of Commerce. What what would you say? Oh, wow. It's so many different stories um, that I can tell, but the most impactful, I want to say, like we talked about before, was the technical assistance program um, because we were able to see businesses grow. Um, We were also able to um, just be that hand and listening hand. Um, God, that's a hard question, Daryl. Well, let me tell you this. Um, You remember when you, and, and this goes back to the important collaborative voice that our minority chambers bring in this community. Uh, the Capital City Chamber of Commerce was founded more than 20 years ago. It is our right. oldest minority chamber of commerce in our community. Um, one of the things I thought was important when y'all came together and you all shared with our community as well as with our government, it was about ten, about a 10-point plan, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes. That 10-point plan highlighted a whole lot of things that we that y'all believe and, and we believe mm-hmm. were important resources and tools that our minority and women-owned businesses needed to thrive. I'm most proud that one of those is his, uh, uh, parts of that 10-point plan was a need for microloan dollars in our community. And <laughs> being able to make those financial resources available for minority businesses. Um, one of the things that we know has been critical for business success is the access to capital. Right. And under traditional sources, traditional lenders, and this is a reality, are do not are not necessarily the most uh, uh, amenable source for financing. And so uh, this community, the Office of Economic Vitality, in cooperation with 
Leon County, we started a, a, a micro lending program in partnership with the Appalachian Regional Planning Council. And then there was a second one that came out of the lobbying and the advocacy right. of that 10 point plan started by those chambers. And there was a person who seemed to run the ball into the into the end zone. <laughs> Come on, Katrina. <laughs> well, um, you know, you making me I I. I I want to say thank you to the community and thank you to um, Leon County for listening and OEV. Um, but yes, that uh, that million dollars and since then it's been an additional two million. So it would be three million dollars that was put um, down there at FAMU Credit Union um, um, as a resource to help with that redlining that a lot of the businesses um, go through. That program, um, we were able to um, stick right there with FAMU um, as a community and get that first million out, which is great. And I'm like, Daryl, now if I could clap, I would. Um, but we also have, uh, they have secured more dollars to help that. And right along with Appalachia Regional Planning Council, they have been a great resource as well. So you have two options. And most of the time, um, I've had people contact me from out of the communities like, how in the world? I say, we asked. We, as chambers, um, asked our officials um, to put those dollars in the community for businesses, for minority businesses. Well, it has been enormously impactful. We are preparing to make the make our community aware of what has been the impact of that uh, of that first micro loan uh, investment by Leon County, and I and I want to thank you specifically as well as both chambers of commerce for your advocacy and making that possible. Thank you. It is an important resource. What I'm hoping, and I and I've said this both publicly and privately, that we can also use those same micro loan dollars to help to. Uh, augment what we do in terms of supplier diversity. Imagine when businesses secure loans, I mean, secure bids to work on some of these projects right. to be able to have the financial resources to be able to respond to more than one project simultaneously because you've got the cash on hand to buy materials and supplies, make payroll, and then after you're after you get paid, able to pay off that loan because it's a revolving mm -hmm. loan fund. It is. It is intended to stay around forever as people continue to mm -hmm. secure those monies and use them, and that they're always going to be available to our community. It's a. It is a. And let me tell you why you should really, really be proud of this, Katrina. You and both chambers. It is a sustainable project. Oh yeah, yeah. So, and that's that's the second thing we can get into really quickly. But just to go back to this red line and what you just triggered my memory. So, going through the PPP process and everybody just don't know what to do, don't know whether to trust it. Um, I had one of my businesses. Um, I contact my financial institution down in South Florida, and I needed to do my paperwork. And I have a team who was working on mine, right? While I'm working on everybody else's in LA in Leon County, I got. Right somebody else working on mine um and it took forever for them to respond to me and i'm worried about paying my staff so what happened was i called down there i i called i had the uh, I say, okay, what would Lily Tuggerson do? <laughs> <laughs> I called down there. I literally told the representative that was over that was doing my paperwork. I said, y'all got 30 minutes to respond to me, and I'll come and pull all $10 of mine out of this financial institution. <laughs> um, and I got a response. I got a, I actually got an approval within the 30 minutes. Wow. Um, so... That is what we mean by redlining. Um, and so the chambers are able to advocate for you um, through the micro lending process. We got to know all of the financial institutions and bridge um, a, a tighter gap with them so we can make sure that we're securing ways for everybody. I love it. I love it. So let's talk about uh, we can't have this conversation without talking about diversity, equity and inclusion. And we hear these words being bandied about uh, in our conversations. We hear about conversations in education, mm -hmm. government, politics. Uh, we hear about it in business. What do you mean? What, to tell me why though, those words, diversity, equity, inclusion, what do they mean to you when it relates to our local economy? Um, I, I can say that is why me and you exist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we existed before COVID. Um, because it was just never, 
it was never equal opportunities. And so um, the OEV it created your position, and then um, the Greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce created the position um, for um, director of diversity. But nevertheless, it ensures that everyone has an equal opportunity, and um, it just breaks down barriers. But what has happened in the last two years um, – and, and, you know, this goes back to the incident with George Floyd. It gave everybody a deep insight um, of the so social injustice, the business injustice. I'm just naming some injustices that we've all dealt with for years. Right. Um, it gave a more sensitive eye, a more sensitive heart um, to um, people that are genuinely care and say, let's get it right. So... It's very important. These positions are um, very important that we get it right and, and do be intentional about it and don't just put a minority on a team just because they're black. Make sure that we are intentional in um, bringing solutions to the problem. And we know that the co we know that COVID and the pandemic had biz uh, effect on businesses across the country, but we also know the statistics and data and metrics that that, that, that have uh, made it quite clear that minority-owned businesses were greatly were more affected, uh, faced the likelihood of greater opportunity for closure mm -hmm. uh, across this country than non-minority-owned businesses. Now, and and the reason it matters to us here in Tallahassee is that we were able, by virtue of the advocacy, primarily from both chambers of commerce to avert those types of statistics affecting our businesses. Really? Because, y'all, because of your advocacy and mm -hmm. ultimately the deter final determinants from our IA board and our both of our commissions, the Leon County Commission and the City Commission, they were able to set aside money specifically to make certain that minority-owned businesses' needs were met as well as providing the type of technical assistance that y'all did meant that that money was able to hit the streets, save jobs, and save businesses. So kudos to you. Thank you, thank you. That's why you're a champion. <laughs> thank you so because much. Because let me just tell y'all, in her <laughs> modesty, y'all, why you want me on the radio show? Because you are a champion. And I want her to know that today. And that her community is grateful that she has a legacy of impact that I think needs to be discussed. And I'm happy that she's agreed to be with me. So now tell me about some of the businesses that make you most proud, Katrina. Oh, my goodness. One of the, um, one of the, a lot of the businesses, one of the ones I remember during the pandemic when we had to be creative and do that virtual ribbon cutting. And that was with um, CWC Catering with Care. And I'm like, how huh, in the world? I, and so that's when I pulled a, the IT team together. I said, y'all need to get this ribbon to cut on this line. That's right. <laughs> and um, You that, had and Chrissy Souders. Yeah, and Chrissy. Chrissy, that's how um, Chrissy. Because we started using Chrissy because you started using yes, Chrissy. Yes, yes. You were able to get Chrissy and she comes in there stream. You know, because I can't do all that technical stuff and try Girl, to get me the message either. right. Me and either. It's just too much. And so what we did was we did a virtual ribbon cutting. That was the most exciting. People need, needed to hear something good and some hope, right? Um, and they were able to relocate on their place down there on South Monroe Street, and they've been thriving and doing great things. Great job. Ever since then. I love hey, Teresa, next. <laughs> I love that one. And Teresa was one of our first businesses that said, let me try Capital City Chambers. So I love Miss Teresa. Um, my next one was last year we had the opportunity to take, um, oh, Lord, what is there called? The cookies, the the three guys. Um, the dandies? Yes. We had the chance to take chocolate dandies. They're going to get me for this. Um, but we, um, the Florida Restaurant Lodging Association, through this um, equity and being diverse and stuff, they reached out to Capital City Chamber and said, we we don't have a minority chamber that's a partner with us. Would, would you guys be that? Oh, awesome. Right, right. So I didn't know about that. Yeah, we, I, I announced it. I think I announced it. I may have forgot. <laughs> but anyway, we had the opportunity through their sponsorship, through their partnership, we took the chocolate dandies down to Fort Lauderdale. And so, and, and with that being said, before we take a business out of town you have to make sure everything is lined up and correctly and we have met everything is there so when you go out of town we present well the chocolate dandies was there 
when we went down, um, I knew that they were going to have the boys and their little bow ties. I just knew when we walked out, it was going to be on. Um, everybody was so impressed. Since then, they have also partnered with DoorDash. The DoorDash um, representative for the region um, has um, also um, partnered with them, and they were able to secure different contracts that they would have never secured here locally. So again, Capital City Chamber just don't advocate locally. We're starting to advocate for you statewide, regionally, and also we connected with Starbucks. Remember? Exactly. I was about to say, don't leave out Starbucks. That was a girl you had. I was like... We also she got connect, Starbucks. Also, we connected with Star- Starbucks, and they have already reached out to us for this year. Um, so we do have some things coming up for next month. That was really a coup. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, wow! And I, I was a part. We were a part of the ribbon cutting for that, for their uh, investment. They chose, they chose a chamber from our local community to help them to do a nationwide campaign putting a focus on on African American History Month. First time. That was fantastic. Look at it. See, that's why I know you're... uh, (laughs) uh, Shout out to Apostle (laughs) Lily Tugger. Oh, I got beat to think. I got beat. Look at it. But, you know, again, humility, you know, pride goes before a fall, right? We know that. Right, right, right. Right? And so... The fact that you're so humble, but yet you've had such enormous impact. So tell me. But you know what, Daryl, you keep saying that humbleness comes with growing up. It comes with challenges that you've had in your life. Um, And what you do is you take those challenges. Either you um, put them to do good things or you can put them to be negative. And I chose to be positive at all times. Right. And, 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 And the fact that you... Uh, you know, your your modesty is, is sincere and heartfelt, and we appreciate it. But I want you to know <laughs> that when we talk about economic vitality, you are definitely a part of economic vitality. In Thank this you so much. All right. So tell me what's next for the Capital City Chamber of Commerce. Well, I'm excited. Today, we are growing. Um, we... <laughs> <laughs> So you, the community just won't see my face. Um, we actually are announcing our team today. Um, so go out to our social media platforms, um, our, our um, Facebook page, our Instagram, and also on our website. Um, so we added a director of community engagement. Um, we also added a director of financial empowerment. Um, we also added a director of business empowerment. The business empowerment um, it is Miss Christine. Christina Lynch. Um, she also works with SBDC. So we got someone that are hands on and know what they're doing to make sure that um, your business would thrive. And she will make sure all of the workshops and keep everyone up with their paperwork and engaged um, with the financial empowerment. The financial empowerment is huge. And it goes back to what we were talking about with the redlining and making sure the business. this financial empowerment will be there to assist to make sure the courses for the micro lending program go in full flourishing. So I put her in place. Who's that person? This person is um, Misha Ware, and she's the director over at Prime Meridian. I know Misha. Yeah, Misha. She's in the current leadership Tallahassee class. She's in, oh, is she? Yes. So anyway, nevertheless, so we, I wanted to, one of the, the, out of the 10 points, we wanted to make sure that there were workshops and courses that went along with the micro lending program. So you just, you'll know, and it keeps you sustainable and also on the reporting, how you doing in that micro lending so that you can grow. So that if you need that million dollars, you don't have to go to the micro lending program anymore. You can just go to any program and get what you need. Because you got what you we exactly. got what it takes. Exactly, you got what it takes. So she will be um, expanding on that program, and then we have a membership engagement. So I get all the time. I don't know what you guys are doing. So we um, and that's big now on social media and the times. It, you you need a um, virtual platform, media platform. So that person there will keep the member. Members more engaged and make sure everyone knows what we're doing. It's all about member benefits. It's all about member benefits. Okay. And our chair um, is um, Byron Green. He decided to do, we voted him in to do a second year for the chair, and the vice chair is Dr. Bruce Sturable. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. So tell me what can we do? Uh, You've also, you've been involved with. 
both, and it's not Capital City Chamber, let me be very clear, serves both minority and women-owned businesses, mm-hmm. correct? Right. Uh, you've got a divorce, a, a diverse board. Tell me some I other... got divorced, too. It's okay. I mean, I mean di- got diverse. Diver- <laughs> diverse board. You have a diverse board, uh, Ms. Tucker. So. <laughs> Tell me about some of your board members. Um, so what we're doing is we are getting ready right now, um, and we've been having meetings about adding more people to our board. So if you're interested, send us a resume, and you can email it to me. Um, but our diverse board, I, I call it my bo- the board of wisdom, right? So we just at the point where we can start adding more members to the board but right now the reason I call it our board of wisdom because that was the a lot of them were the original capital city chamber of commerce board even before I came along okay. and so I call them my board of wisdom because they're business owners in the community they have they know all of the ins and out about businesses around here in the community and it also started with Mr. Terrence Henson Mr. Frank Williams we have Miss Pam Ridley and um, we have have a lot of board members that have been around for years, so that's my board of wisdom. Tell, tell, you got you got Frank Williams, you've got Terrence Henson on your board. Who else you got? Um, Miss Pam Ridley, she owns the storage facility over there, and okay. then you need the, any type of storage. And she um, she's on a lot of different boards in the community, but okay. she's always been a community. And the, of course, Byron Green, Byron he's Green. on a lot of different boards. He and I are on the Tallahassee Symphony Orchestra board together. Yeah, they didn't want me to play, but <laughs> <laughs> um, and and so we just have a lot of people that has bring a wealth of knowledge and experience. Well, one last question, and as we come to an end, uh, we will have opportunity. One, let me just tell our, our listeners, I enjoy working with Katrina. One, Katrina delivers because she, hey, she's going to do something, she's going to get it done. But then I also appreciate the fact that she brings an infectious enthusiasm to her work. She's serious about what she does, and she's serious about making certain that she has impact for our people. To that end, she and I are participating and working together with Mr. Vaughn Wilson with Mega right. Ace Media for the Black Business Expo that will be next month, Saturday, September, Saturday, February 26th. So tell me about uh, the Black Business Expo and your involvement. I'm excited. So right now, uh, we just in the middle of the planning and pulling it all together. And right now, up under the leadership with Vaughn and he and, and what the thing about Mr. Vaughn Wilson that I've learned a lot from him and he doesn't even know this. He is a member of all chambers. Right. Okay. So what he went and he um I think during this time of um, and don't quote me on this, but he tra- he changed his business too and he went off as a self entrepreneur during the pandemic and everything and his grew. he knew what he wanted to go after he connected with everyone um in within the community but he also um has been that voice well how how can i be as a member to the chambers connect and help others so through this black expo when i when he shared the idea with me I was talking to him to share another idea with him. And he's like, no, Katrina, I got this other. I say, okay, I'm on board. So just to say, any of y'all members, everything does not have to come from the top. I listen to my members. Mm -hmm. And we are partnering with him and getting it done. um, And we will offer certain own hands, like we said, the technical assistance right there on on the site. It will be, you will be able to find out information and bring results when you come. Um, You will be able to take results home with you. Well, I think this 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 Black Business Expo. Let me just say this, and we, I'm gonna say this <laughs> modestly. In the last five or six years, mm-hmm. right? You know, all things work together for good, right? Right. And I just believe that, in what we know has been uh, economic turmoil. We were called for such a time as this. Absolutely. There's no question about it. And so I I just want to thank you, Katrina, for availing your skills, talent, and (laughs) perspective to be a part of what I believe has been a renaissance 
uh, and entrepreneurialism for minorities and women in this community. Uh, it started with conversations, and see, this 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 is why we got to to, to talk about your right. Long before they, long before my position was created, you were a part of conversations that led to the consolidation of, of the, the minor of the minority mm-hmm. women programs that were mm-hmm. formerly with the city and the county. Mm-hmm. You were a part of a blue ribbon task force that led to the and then making certain that this division of minority women right. and small business were, would be a part not of neighborhood or community services Mm-mm. but because you realize the, the economic importance people like you Keith Bowers, Frank Williams right. and others who sat on that Blue Ribbon Task Force then we, 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 that, we, that this office would reside in the new economic development organization to serve Tallahassee Leon County right so I have to acknowledge the fact that the position I now hold was made possible by your advocacy a long, long time ago before the position was I created. I forgot about that part of history. <laughs> yeah. So I just want I saw I just want you to know that you are indeed a champion. Uh, the Office of Economic Vitality is grateful for you. What has been your advocacy? What has been your leadership? Your guidance and the collaborative spirit that we enjoy, and we know the impact that it has had. I hope our listeners got a chance to hear about some of the great things that you've done, and to know a little bit more about you, and to know that just you one are thing indeed I want to add, though, Daryl. Let me just add one more. Even though we have the Black Expo coming uh-huh. up on January the 31st would be the first time and it's in collaboration with Big Ben Minority Chambers to we are um, with the also a part of the Black Association of Black Chambers for the state of Florida for the first time. In the state of Florida, all of the black chambers will be coming to a day on the hill, January the 31st. Wow. We're having a reception, um, which we have TNL. Um, we having a reception. We have at, TNL? We have TNL. At the reception? Yeah, yeah. Um, for the chamber. I had to say that for Doc, uh, you know, Doc <laughs> did cut me off air. Um, but we want to show Tallahassee's finest when they come, when the exactly. other. Exactly other black um, chamber leaders from around the state come up and we will be putting out a legislative ask. The leg- One of the legislative asks will be a disparity study for the state. Um, through that disparity study for the state, we will ask for different things in different communities. Um, and so in order for that, I think that's one of my little babies right now um in order for that to spill out from what we're doing here in tallahassee to spill over into the state is huge um again look for that information on our social media pages and i also share it with oev so that you can get it out as well thank you uh, will we be invited at oev you always invite <laughs> you don't need an invite <laughs> Again, Katrina, thank you for being a champion, and thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. And pay attention. Again, you will hear more uh, about the Black Business Expo and Mega Ace Media. Uh, and we, uh, I'm pro- delighted to say that the Tallahassee right. County Office of Economic Vitality is a presenting sponsor for the Black Business Expo, uh, February 26th at the Moon. Again, Katrina, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. And I want to thank the good folks here at Hallelujah 95.3. And I want to thank our good friend Michael Cork with McCork Solutions uh, for making this broadcast possible. And again, uh, I am certain for each and every one of us and for our businesses, mm-hmm. we're going to continue to do that mm-hmm. common thing mm-hmm. uncommonly well. Again, mm-hmm. today it's Capturing mm-hmm. Champions. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Capturing Champions, presented by the Tallahassee Leon County Office of Economic Vitality. Champion. Champion. Capturing Champions.